Uh, hey everyone, so I recently got a new phone, um, so hopefully my videos will be slightly better quality. Um, so today I want to tell you about um, this new lubricant I'm working on, uh, DNM37, uh, revision, multiple revisions actually. Um, this one currently is revision F, we let revision C people sample it at Hudson Valley. Um, and it's, I'm going to explain everything to you. Uh, it's going to be a quick little chemistry lesson. We're going to, I'm going to teach you some things. We'll, I'll keep some of the trade secrets secret, but um, I'll hopefully, if you watch this video, you can learn something. Um, my hands are a little messy because I do a lot of experiments um, when I'm not busy making magnetic cubes, but uh, we hope to have a lot of cool stuff coming your way. Um, a lot of the stuff's been shelled until after holidays. Um, holidays are really, really busy at the cubicle, and... I can't even I I can't tell you how many cubes I'm making, but I'm making a lot of cubes. Um, but hopefully we'll get that out soon. Um, but we have a lot of exciting new experiments to show you. So um, let me tell you a bit about this new lubricant. So um, in my honest opinion, um, the whole lubricants uh, one wait one through five, there's not much to improve on there. Um, there are a few aspects for lubricants you're going to look for to, like um, shear, uh, viscosity. Um, I th actually think those two things are more important than actual lubrication, like uh, coefficients of friction. <coughs> I'm also cu I'm also sick right now, um, so lubricants have to look through a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, you have to have a really deep understanding of formulation chemistry, um, which is a little bit of a difficult field to look into. So, when I wanted to make lubricant, I started to look at problems that current lubricants had. So, uh, water-based lubricants, like uh, Maru is the most famous, or Meru, depending on where you're from, um, it fades away really quick. So I started to think to myself, what are some ways we can make it last longer? What if <coughs> we designed a water-based lube? Um, so, let me step back a little bit. Um, a lot of information for lubricants can be found on the label, actually. So if you look at posts from uh, Chi Yi, they posted uh, the exact uh, the exact unit of density, not density, uh, viscosity of their lube. Uh, you'll notice they said uh, centripoise or CS, uh, centistrokes. Uh, those are units of uh, viscosity, and you can like backwards engineer their lubes. And uh, you'll notice uh, Chi Yi said their lube was made out of cymethicone. Uh, that, that was actually a typo. S is next to D. They actually meant to say dimethicone, uh, which is a long silicone-based chain with a uh, few carbon-based end, end caps and different functionalities on it. So basically, it's a polysiloxane lube, and that's pretty much what most lubes are. They differ in length of their molecular weight and the end caps. So you can end up with really, really huge variances just not on the type of molecule, but the shape and the size and what's on the molecule itself. The, the chain is actually the same in most of these lubes. It's just a polysiloxane chain, which is just oxygens and silicons in a long chain. And when they rub against each other, they have low friction, which is pretty cool. <coughs> um, so why is this, in, why is this, uh, why is this information useful? Um, it gives you a good idea of what to make in a lube. So, uh, I knew that the water-based lube had to have been mostly polysiloxane stabling compounds, which are secret, um, solvents, but they were missing two very important things. Uh, one of those things is secret, um, but the other thing I think I can discuss, it's a, a concept that I'm going to teach you, a chemistry concept called hygros hygroscopicity, or how hygroscopic something is. So, um, in chemistry, uh, hygroscopy is when something is really, really attracted to water. Um, and you can get this effect so strong if something is hygroscopic enough, it can actually absorb water molecules from the air. Um, the relative humidity of most places is about uh, at least 20 to around 60, maybe 70, 80 if you're in the south. But there's always water molecules in the air. It's not just oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. It's a... Uh, it, it also has water dissolved in it. So unless you're in the desert, there's always water in the air. And if you can design a compound, maybe a hygroscopic salt, a solid, hygroscopic liquid, 
and you combine that with a stabilizing, co stabilizing compound, lubricating compound that's water-based, and then a few other secret ingredients to other secret things, which if you wouldn't have, it wouldn't feel just right, then you could have a really nice cube lubricant. I haven't addressed cube feel yet, and that's the big secret. Um, maybe if circumstances are right, I could I could give another chemistry lesson about that, but today the lesson is on uh, hygroscop hygroscop how hygroscopic something is. So by adding <coughs> a hygroscopic element in the lube, it keeps it liquid much longer. And this allows the lubricant to uh, not get pushed around in the same way. It'll stick to the plastic surface and it'll stay wet so you can get that same wet suspended feel. Because when it's dry, it's a different feel. And when it's dry, it flakes off or it gets pushed into the crevices. But when it's liquid, you get that nice sliding effect between the surfaces, and some people really like that. Um, the whole point of this is to offer multiple lubricants to suit everyone's feelings. So if you want the heavy feel, you can get the 50K. If you like the really light feel, you can go with Silk or DNM, and uh, other things like that. Um, so um, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a quick. Com I'm going to show you a quick comparison of the three. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the DNM name. And uh, here's a time lapse of uh, DNM versus two common water-based lubes, uh, Maru and Z. You can see that Z lube starts to disappear quickly, and uh, Maru follows shortly afterwards, whereas uh, the DNM remains due to hygroscopy. So, uh, DNM 37 is. Uh, the reason we chose that name is because um, I wanted this lubricant to be uh, my personal creation, my baby. So uh, you might know I went to grad school for chemistry and in academia there are a lot of compounds, well even in uh, pharmaceutical laboratories. I studied uh, medicinal chemistry in uh, for my PhD, uh, well attempted PhD. and. Uh, a lot of compounds have code names. Uh, in particular, the logo that I designed for this lube, uh, in the background is a big molecule. And that molecule is a stylized version of what's called uh, MK7655. Um, and in academia and labs, people will refer to these names as casual names to each other, and they'll actually know based on the number, like uh, DM45. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, and we'll look back on uh, DM30. Uh, 32, yeah, that was a bad one, but 47, that's where it's at. Uh, people will communicate these things, especially in biochem where everything has uh, a shortened term. Uh, I wanted to use that academia style naming. Um, it's not a permanent name, we might change names, but uh, as an internal code word, that's what we're calling it for now. Um, in the font, those are the actual fonts in the publications that I wanted to submit um, in my other research, and uh, that molecule in the background is. Uh, one of my target molecules in grad school. I never uh, succeeded in making it, but uh, that was one of my, that molecule had a special meaning to me. Um, it's actually an antibiotic that uh, literally cures, not treats, it cures uh, certain infections, particularly in your urinary tract. Um, so I wanted to include that element of uh, chemical research, uh, scientific thought into making lube and improving Rubik's Cubes, and that's the deeper meaning behind the name and the uh, logo. I just wanted to use something from academia to make it feel like uh, something of my own. So uh, this is a longer video <laughs> than usual, um, and that's it, that's DNM. We're hopefully gonna tweak it a little bit, uh, change one of those secret attributes, and hopefully it'll hit the market soon. Thanks for listening.